сколько раз нанесли ударов? Раз по моему три. От ваших ударов что произошло с ним? С ним? Он упал и еще крякал что-то. Let's dig into the life and crimes of the oldest serial killer in the history of Russia, who was caught in action at the age of 81. From killing cats to killing human beings, what led Sofia Jukova, also known as the Granny Ripper, to end and feast on the flesh of innocent lives? What went wrong? Why did she chop up her victims, make food out of their meat, and offer it to the neighbors? Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name is James and this is the case of Sofia Jukova. In the year of 1939, Sofia Jukova was born into a poor family in a small village area about 40 miles away from Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, which was the USSR at that time. Sofia grew up to be a strong and sturdy woman who was no less than a man in terms of physical strength. Her parents did not send her to school, so she ended up being illiterate. Because Sofia did not learn to read and write, her options for choosing a stable profession were close to none. She worked doing manual labor in factories to make ends meet for herself. Later, she moved to a small apartment on the second floor in a building in Bereskova, which is located in far eastern Russia at the suburb of Kaburovsk. At work, she met a man named Ivan, who was known as a calm and quiet person. He was the complete opposite of Sofia's character, but somehow the two of them got married and had three sons, but one of the children died prematurely. So the couple was left with two sons to care for. After her marriage, Sofia got a job as a pig slaughterer at a sausage factory in Beresovka. She worked hard for many years to educate her sons and raise them well together with her husband. Unfortunately, the sons moved out of the house to get jobs and never turned back to see their mother. Both of them out of contact with their parents, and the couple was left alone in their tiny apartment. Ivan and Sofia had to work hard despite their old age. Sofia retired from the sausage factory and found work as a security guard at a home improvement store near her apartment. The couple were living a peaceful life until one unfortunate day. Ivan tragically passed away, and Sofia was left isolated, alone in this cruel world. To deal with the ruthless world alone, Sofia chose a violent path that would destroy many lives in the coming years. The year 2005 began with the death of Sofia's husband. Later, in 2006, a young girl in the neighborhood of Beras Ovka went missing and was found dead and wrapped in a plastic bag a couple months later. Nastya Alexienkar was eight years old when she disappeared while returning home from school with her friend. The girls said goodbye to their grandparents, but Alexino did not return from school that day. The police had suspected that Nastya had run away from home. The parents immediately disregarded this suspicion because their daughter had the best relationship with her family and would never do something as foolish as running away. They said Nastya was an obedient child who loved her family and friends and had a good relationship with her parents. Running away from home was very unlike their daughter as she was a home child. Vika, Nasta's friend, who was with her when she went missing, testified that the two of them talked for a while and then Nastya went into the building, but an elderly woman followed her inside. The description of that woman perfectly fits the features of one resident in the building, Sofia Jukova. Interrogation with Sofia was no easy task. Her testimony was calm and thorough, and she did not budge on her statement for a second. Despite Vika testifying that the old woman would curse and shout at the neighborhood kids, especially Nastya, Sofia denied her nasty behavior toward the children. She instead bragged about her friendly relationship with the missing girl and said that she loved playing and chatting with Nastya and missed her every second of the day. When the police told her, about Vika's testimony. She said that Yastya was merely running past her and she had nothing to do with her disappearance. This statement seemed quite convincing to the investigators, so they marked Sofia off the suspect list. The missing girl caused havoc in the town. The police failed to find the kidnapper, which instilled fear in the residents. Every suspect on the list had been marked off by the police and they had no clue left to pursue the victim's case. Nobody had any clue about poor Nastya until one day her mother got a phone call. 
An unknown person made the call from a local sausage factory. The person told Nastya's mother that her daughter was alive. Sometime after, a local man found frozen meat near the city dump. He took the bag, intending to cook it to feed to his dogs. While going through the bones and flesh, the man found something that would haunt him for the rest of his life. A girl's decapitated head, hidden under the piles of bones, was staring right back at him with empty eyes. Nobody knew who committed the heinous and heartless crime of killing and dismembering the body of an eight-year-old. Investigators pronounced the dismembered body as Nastia's. They later determined that her body had suffered from blunt force injuries, and her head showed wounds caused by an axe head. Seven years later, the town of Berezovka would witness another missing persons case. This time, the victim would be a friend of the suspect herself. In March 2013, Anastasia Mikave asked Sophia if she could stay at her house. The victim was a pensioner, ready to move in with her daughter, who lived in Moscow. But the complications of paperwork did not allow her to visit her daughter immediately. Anastasia had sold her apartment for 3 million rubles. The transaction was done in cash, but she deposited it into her bank account. Nobody knew about it except Sophia when Anastasia came to stay the night with her. The victim had planned to travel early in the morning, after staying the night with Sophia, to the nearby province of Primorier to visit with her relatives. But Anastasia was never seen again. A postman came to Sophia's door with Anastasia's pension. As soon as Anastasia, the rightful owner of the pension, received it, she became a missing person. Her daughter and relatives contacted her to find out when she was embarking on her journey toward Moscow, only to discover that Anastasia's body was found in the trash near the town of Beresovka. To find out who destroyed her mother's body so horribly, Anastasia's daughter contacted the police to start an investigation. Of course, Sophia was the first suspect, since she was the only one who knew about Anastasia's plans besides her daughter and relatives. The investigators discovered the belongings of the victim, along with her passport, at the murderer's house. The police searched Sophia's house and found traces of blood, which turned out to be Anastasia's. On interrogation, Sophia was quick to express her innocence by claiming that the blood was definitely Anastasia's. But the two of them quarreled, and the victim had a nosebleed due to the high blood pressure. The quarrel resulted in Anastasia slamming the door on Sophia's face and leaving the house in a black car which went to an unknown destination. Sophia reacted to the situation calmly and handled the investigators, but this would be the last time she would succeed in shifting the attention away from herself. This was the last time Sophia was suspected, but not charged. The next time she would be caught red-handed with enough evidence for the court to sentence her to life imprisonment or even death. Six years have passed and the death of Anastasia is no longer the talk of the town. Sophia is fed up with her financial situation and is looking for ways to earn money easily. Because of her old age and declining health, renting a room in her house is the only uncomplicated way for her to continue to live carefree. And then another friend came into the picture. Vasily Shliatik, a janitor and an immigrant from Ukraine, had a quarrel with his wife. He was thrown out of the house, and Sophia's room for rent sounded like a breath of fresh air in his life. The room was quite affordable, and the owner looked trustworthy. So, Vasily made a decision to live at Sophia's house for a while, but his good luck was short-lived. One tragic day in January 2019, Vasily cashed his paycheck and went to his rented room, never to be found again. His employer was well aware of his drinking habits, so he did not inform the police immediately. But days went by, and there was no trace of the janitor. Vasily, who would usually come back after two or three days. The employer decided to inform the police about the missing janitor, who had been kicked out of the house by his wife. Sophia was interrogated once again as Vasily's landlord, but she was not very cooperative, so the police did not bother her with too much questioning. This time, she was not calm, and wanted the investigators to leave her alone immediately. Until one day, the children found the remains of a man while playing on the street. Vasily's arm was found in a garbage bag. The other party parts were dumped in piles of the trash. 
Police began probing for his remaining body parts. While searching a block near Sophia and Vasily's apartment, investigators found the remaining torso of the victim in the heating pipes disguised as trash. The shocking discovery of the remaining body parts compelled the investigators to search Sophia's apartment. There were too many coincidences to overlook Sophia as a murder suspect. The search began at her house. Investigators found the bowels and intestines of the victim in the refrigerator. An axe with the blood of Vasily was discovered as well. All of his belongings were kept intact in his room. While searching for Vasily's remains, police found another victim's dry blood in Sophia's house. DNA would later identify the blood was Nastias, the youngest victim of the Granny River. Sophia's list of friends is long. If only her companions knew about her gruesome desires to kill human beings and eat their meat, they would have distanced themselves from her a long time ago. But unfortunately, nobody knows what goes on in her mind when she sees a person around her. All she saw was red flesh and blood, and not a human with feelings and emotions. Neither did she care about her victims' families, who never got to see them again, which left an empty space in their lives. Nina Babanko might be another old friend of Sophia's who had no idea about her companion's vicious tendencies. She was 83 years old at the time her luck went wrong, and she had to come to Beresovka to stay with Sophia for some days. But she did not know that a few days of staying at her friend's would turn out to be the very last of her days. The neighborhood of Beresovka confirmed that they saw Nina staying with Sophia. She lived there for a few days until one day Nina went missing to never come back again. The residents of the building would then see Sophia wearing Nina's clothes. They also noticed Sophia renovating her house every time a person went missing. She would paint the walls and change the curtains and wallpapers, then wash out her house with lots of water and soap. But nobody dared to ask her about her missing friend because of the fits of anger Sophia would throw at every individual who tried to initiate a conversation with her. The police were quite certain that Nina's disappearance was somehow related to Sophia, but they never found a dead body or even a trace of her DNA at Sophia's apartment. Due to a lack of concrete evidence, the investigators could not charge her with another kidnapping case despite being sure that it was none other than the cruel Granny Ripper of Beresovka, Russia. Sophia and her husband Ivan lived a good life together. After the couple's children left them all alone, they still had each other. But the death of her husband had a lasting impact on Sophia, and her neighbors noticed a sudden change in her character. She killed the stray cats of the neighborhood, but no one thought the situation would escalate to taking the lives of humans. The neighbors often complained to the police about her hitting stray cats with an axe as she was at her slaughterhouse butchering the pigs. But no serious action was taken against her cruel behavior toward the harmless animals. Sophia also yelled at the neighborhood children for playing too loudly and would pick a fight whenever possible. The kids often complained about Sophia to their parents. She would never let them play near the apartment. Some children were afraid of her hot-tempered nature, so they would run away from her whenever she came to yell at them. On the other hand, some kids were fearlessly pranking her and making fun of her anger. Little did they know that a foolish little prank could cost them their precious lives. I will chop off your hands and head, Sophia would say to anyone who even breathed in front of her. But no one, of course, took her seriously. She was an old woman of 66 years. Despite Sophia being bulky, people were not afraid of her temperament and ignored her every time she threw a tantrum. The children were not scared of her. They made fun of her and used to play pranks to add fuel to the fire. Nastia cheekily threw ice cream on the old woman after she told her to be quiet. A couple of days after the young girl's disappearance, neighbors saw Sophia renovating her house. She whitewashed the walls and put up new wallpaper. These minor repairs then became a habit. Behind the whitewashed walls would be the blood of her victims, which the residents would discover several years later. Constantly repairing her house was not the only odd change that Sophia adopted after the death of her husband. She began to feed the dogs pieces of meat regularly. Despite her hatred for stray animals, she threw massive chunks of meat at them 
and would stay there until they ate them. Sophia would get angry at the kids, but would find every opportunity to feed them jellied meat. The residents of Berzovka found it odd that Sophia threatened to cut off their hands and heads, but generously distributed meat pies and meat jellies. One resident of the apartment, Tatyana, said at the time of the investigation, we always found it strange that despite being surly and unfriendly, she would often find the time to cook things for the local children. They were always meat dishes. Sometimes she gave them to the adults. She brought me and my husband plates with jellied meat. However, Tatyana's husband was suspicious of the food Sophia distributed among her fellow apartment residents. He once told his wife not to eat the meat because it smelled weird. We don't know where the meat in the meat pies came from. The couple threw the meat away immediately and never accepted the food from Sophia again. Now that Tatyana pondered over her husband's suspicions, it seemed like he was right. Despite finding so many of her actions weird and abnormal, nobody in the apartment building complained or even informed the authorities. But they had their own reasons. Upon asking why the tenants ignored so many red flags about Sophia, one resident replied that they just had so much going on in their lives. The neighborhood is poor and always trying to make ends meet. If they had a stable financial situation, they would have taken more notice of her actions. But it was just not the case. And nobody in their right mind would leave their jobs and sit outside Sophia's apartment to investigate the murders and disappearances. While all of this was happening, people related to Sophia in any way kept going missing. Some townspeople noticed the serial killer wearing the dresses of the murdered people, but they ignored it due to the fact that Anastasia was living with Sophia before her body was found in the trash. They thought that Sophia might be wearing the dead woman's clothes because she missed her. After the police discovered Anastasia's dead body, another friend of Sophia went missing. After living with her for a while, Nina Babenko, who was 83 years old in April of 2013, rented a room in the murderer's apartment. After a few days of living in the building, residents never saw Nina again. However, no traces of the victim were left behind. So, the investigation was not carried out by the authorities. Anyone slightly related to Sophia would go missing for a few days. But, the residents never saw her grieving or paying respect to the murdered victims. She continued to distribute food made of meat and remained isolated in her apartment most of the time. The murder of Vasily Shliatik would be the final time Sophia murdered someone. After his dead body was found in heaps of garbage, and his remaining body parts in the heating pipes, the investigators could not ignore so much evidence against Sophia this time. When confronted with the blood evidence, Sophia could no longer hide behind her empty lies. She had to admit to murdering Vasily, and Nastia as well. Investigations continued, and the authorities found shocking details of how Sophia murdered her victims and treated their dead bodies. Her explanation of why she committed the crimes sounded vague and irrational. According to Sophia, Vasily came home with his friend and asked her to serve them tea. But their interactions were different. Instead of drinking the tea, they took sexual advantage over her. Because of this, she killed Vasily with an axe. She told the investigators that she had no other choice but to butcher them for what they had done to her. Later in court, she reenacted her actions of hitting Vasily with an axe in the middle of the head. The dry blood of her first victim, Nastia, was found in Sophia's apartment. She had preserved it for almost 14 years. Sophia admitted to killing the eight-year-old as well. The reason? Nastia, Alexia Carr, was too noisy and she threw an ice cream cone at Sophia. Because the murderer could not tolerate a kid being loud while playing, throwing ice cream on her face was too much for Sophia to handle. She had to silence the little girl for her entire life. Sophia kidnapped the young girl, took her to her house, and started beating her with tools that she had at home. Then, she grabbed her axe and hit Nastia on the head. Sophia admitted to keeping Nastia hostage for weeks, beating her daily and then killing the young girl the day before she was found in the trash bag. Truly awful. A real life horror movie. She also confessed to murdering Anastasia Mikhaev. When the victim stayed at Sophia's house, she was being too arrogant about going to Moscow to stay with her daughter. 
This incited jealousy in Sophia's heart because both of her sons left her when she needed them the most and never contacted her. Sophia thought that Anastasia was making fun of her loneliness and poor living standards. So she took her revenge by killing her friend the night before her body was found dumped in the garbage. Police also suspected Sophia of killing Nina Babanko. However, they did not have enough evidence to charge her with murdering another friend. The police found huge portions of human remains in Sophia's refrigerator, an ax with Vasily's blood on it, dried blood, and several belongings of her victims, such as passports, clothes, shoes, and official papers. Investigators charged Sophia with the murder of Nastya Alexia Karp, Anastasia Mikhaev, and Vasily Shliatik. They also charged her with the desecration of the dead bodies. The police lacked evidence on whether Sophia had committed other murders, as two or three other missing persons cases were allegedly related to the criminal. She had to be initially charged with five murders, but due to incompetent investigation, Sophia was charged with only three. Sofia Jukova was finally arrested in February 2019 for murdering three people and desecrating their bodies. Her last murder was at the age of 81, making her the oldest serial killer in Russia. Sofia made friends with her fellow inmates, which was very unlike her usual self. She told her jail friends about her crimes with pride. One inmate informed the interrogators about her confession of killing the four victims. But Sophia rejected the charges in front of the court. Later in the court of Kabarovsk, Sophia admitted to killing the three victims and explained her reason for killing them to the court. The court also brought a toy axe for Sophia to reenact how she killed her victims. And the murderer happily agreed to show the world how she mercilessly took innocent lives. During her trial, the judge was reading out the charges against Sophia. To everyone's surprise, the serial killer started laughing in court and then cursed at the witness. She was kept in a cage during her trial, which Sophia found quite inhumane and a disrespectful act toward a senior citizen. Her demeanor in the court clearly depicted how Sophia was least bothered about the victims and the suffering she has caused their poor families. She was stubborn and proud and acted like she did nothing wrong when the judge asked her to testify in court. She laughed and cursed and made fun of the witnesses and their families. It seemed like she had her own reasons for killing the victims, which she was trying to justify in front of the world. But of course, she failed to do so. No one believed her reasons for killing Vasily because no evidence was found of the victim committing sexual crimes. Witnesses said that the janitor was a habitual drinker and had a lot of arguments with his wife, but he did not make people around him uncomfortable, nor did he harm anyone. When the court asked about her killing her last victim, Vasily, she swore that he took advantage of her. But the court was not inclined to believe her claim because Several pieces of evidence of her killing innocent people were already found. Sophia always had a way of dealing with the investigators. She handled them calmly and answered all of their questions. Had they not searched the apartment, no one would have found out what goes on in the house of the woman who generously feeds meat to her neighbors. When the police found a ton of evidence against her, she had no choice but to admit to her murders. Сколько раз нанесли ударов? Раз, по-моему, три. От ваших ударов что произошло с ним? С ним? Он упал и еще крякал что-то. She pleaded guilty in court, but later while in custody awaiting trial, she retracted her confession and declared that she was innocent. Не видно, но я себя сейчас не виновал. Я ничего не делала. However, she was kept in the detention center where they hold criminals who are awaiting their fates to be decided by the judge. After Sophia retracted her confessions of beating the three victims, killing them, and committing cannibalism, the procedure ran too long to prove her guilty. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and some other reasons, the trial was constantly delayed. But the court had made its decision of punishing Sophia for committing the heinous crimes. Unfortunately, Sophia could not get the punishment she deserved. 
In the year 2021, she contracted the coronavirus and died suddenly, without hearing the final fate determined by the judge. Sophia lived a long and healthy life. She did not have any major illnesses, even at the age of 81. After the death of her husband Ivan, Sophia became an enraged woman who had no control over her anger whatsoever. The murders that she committed were violent and full of rage. It seemed like she was taking revenge on innocent people for simply living a better life than her. Nastia, the young eight-year-old, was a cheeky kid who risked her life by throwing ice cream on Sophia. But the kidnapping and murder were not irrational or done out of anger. Sophia waited for Nastia to come back from school the next day and followed her with the intention of kidnapping her. She later called the mother of Nastia's friend anonymously and told her that she was alive and everything was fine with her. Then she went back to her house and beat the poor kid. She killed her with an axe blow, dismembered her body, took out her intestines and bowels, and then threw her away to feed to the dogs. All of this shows that her first murder was not done out of anger. It was carefully planned and well executed. Later, when Sophia was interrogated about the girl's death, she dealt with the situation with composure and cooperated with the officers, which made her sound like a mature citizen. Not only did she commit the murders, but she was also guilty of feeding other residents human meat. Sophia took away the dignity of the dead victim's bodies and played around with their flesh like they were pigs from the slaughterhouse she once worked in. All of the tools that were used in the slaughterhouse were found in her apartment with the blood of her victims on them. The internal organs of the janitor, Vasily, were found in Sophia's refrigerator at her apartment. The dried blood of her victims and chunks of human meat in her kitchen proved that Sophia was a cannibal. Not only did she eat it herself, but the jellied meat and meat pies that she distributed among her neighbors were made of her victims' dead bodies as well. She also kept belongings of the victims as prized possessions and took pride in them. Sophia told her fellow inmates about her crimes with pride, but later in court, she cursed and yelled at the witnesses for lying to her face. One witness took the stand to testify against Sophia. The witness said that Sophia was an angry woman who yelled at children and threatened to chop off their heads if they did not shut up. The claim enraged Sophia. She then began shouting at the witness from her cage. She said that she had never seen the witness before and they had no reason to lie to her face. Some people were inclined to believe that Sophia was insane or not mentally stable enough to think rationally. A psychiatric examination took place to analyze Sophia's behavior and thought process. According to her psychiatrist, Sophia was fully sane and in her right mind when she committed the murders. Sophia herself never pretended to be insane. She took pride in her killings and told her fellow inmates stories of her brutality toward her victims. After Sophia's death, the court announced her guilty of the murders. Had she been alive, the authorities would have treated her the same way any monstrous killer is dealt with, in jail. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Sofia Jakova. And why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.